Hey everybody, how's it going? So, in the previous video, we looked at the single responsibility principle, which is the first principle for the solid principles. In this video, we're going to focus on the second principle for the solid principles, and that is the open and closed principle. Now, what is the open and closed principle in regards to software engineering? Well, basically what it is, is it allows or, or specifies that our code should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically what it means is that if we have certain dependencies that our class depends on, it should be uh, extensible enough that if we ever want to change those dependencies in the future and still have our code work, it can, okay? And we shouldn't need to modify our class to make those extensions work. All right, now, the best way to see this is with an example. So I'm going to do that right now. So I've got the code open from the previous video, and I basically created a new project called the open and close principle, copying the class files that I had from the single responsibility principle project, okay? So if you haven't seen what was in the previous video, what I did was I had this report generator that now has a single responsibility of getting data from a data provider and then formatting that data using a formatter, okay? And then inside of each of these classes, we had a single responsibility. So this data provider had the responsibility of just getting the data we had the formatter had the responsibility of just formatting the content that comes in from the report. Okay. Then we had this report entry, which is simply just a little class, right? So that built up this report generator class, which was then utilized just by a simple console program. So let's go back to the report generator class for a minute. And let's talk about this open and closed principle. Now, as it says, it says open for extension and close for modification. Now I'm already looking at this code and I'm already concerned about this data provider and this JSON report format. Why am I concerned about these things? Well, just say in the future, this report generator needs to have the ability to fetch data from multiple places, right? And at the moment, we're looking at this and we're actually only allowing a one provider to be able to get data that we may need for a report generation, All right? So this is not really flexible enough. We're, we're basically saying that in order to use this class, you have to use this data provider and you have to use this formatter. Now, later on, we might want to create a different data provider all right, so we go, oh, you know what? We're going to have to modify this class to get that to work. That breaks the second part of the principle, which is close from modification, right? We do not want to modify what is in this class in order to generate a reported string. We want to be able to say that we want to include a provider, right, from the outside that will get the data for us without having directly tied to the class itself. And we also want to be able to provide a type of formatter to this particular method as well that will do the formatting for us rather than, again, tying it directly to the class. This will allow us to get away from the, the situation of having to change this code later on if we're able to take the dependencies here and abstract them out in such a way that this method here we can use it as if it could come from multiple classes, okay? So that's kind of the idea. So what I'm gonna do is this first data provider, well, I do like the name called get data. So I'm gonna create what's known as an interface. And if you've written in C Sharp, you'll know what this is. And this interface will expose a get data uh, method right, that some class can implement and be somehow passed into this class. So let's start with that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to the project, 
I'm actually just going to create a folder here. So add and somewhere here, new folder. And I'm just going to put interfaces. Or we'll say, yeah, no, interfaces will do okay for now. And inside this class, I'm going to create a new file. And what I want is an empty interface. All right. I'm going to call this empty interface an I data provider. All right. So new that up. Now this, this data provider will be very similar to the current data provider we have here as a class, but the difference will be that we want to specify a contract method, right? That this data provider will eventually implement. So let's go back to our I data provider. And I'm going to dump in here this, right? So I'm going to resolve all the using statements here. And also we're going to resolve the name of that. And that should be fine for now. The other thing I will do after cleaning up is I'll actually change the, uh, the namespace for a lot of these things. So just quickly, I'm just going to do some cleanup here. And I'm going to just change the namespace of all these files because they should be using the new namespace, not the old one from the previous projects. Just a quick little clean up here. And I think that should be okay. Whoops. Now, where did my solution go? So view, not design, debug, there it is. So now I've abstracted this provider out to an interface, right? And basically what I want to do now is inside of my reporter, instead of using a data provider class, I now want to change this to an interface, all right? So uh, I'm just going to quickly include this in as well, which for whatever reason it's not coming up, but basically it's using open close principle dot interfaces. Right. So now we're saying we want to be able to pass in any kind of provider that is implementing this interface. Now at the moment, this data provider is not doing that. So let's quickly go and change that so this code will work. So I come over to the data provider and I'm going to implement that iData provider interface. And use that. Beautiful. So now what we've actually done, right, if we go back to the report generator for a second, is we're now saying that in future, if we want to be able to specify a different provider in this class, we will be able to do so. We haven't fi we haven't fully got there yet because at the moment we're still tied directly to the data provider that's being nude up here, but we'll get to that in a second, right? First, I want to actually create the interface for the formatter now, right? So we have this JSON report formatter, but what I really want to do is allow something that is of type report for formatter or an interface called iReport formatter to be able to be used in this report generator as well. Okay. So I'm going to create another interface here. I'm going to come down and go new file and we're empty interface. And I'm going to go iReport formatter. Go new. Now we've got this new interface called iReport formatter. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to copy what we have for the format entries at string in the JSON report format. Okay. So we're going to come back over and I'm going to implement this as a contract method. And also system.collections. And so now we have a contract for 
formatting these reports that says anything that we want to format these reports needs to abide by this or needs to implement this method okay so once again like we did with the data provider i'm going to come to the json formatter and i'm going to implement that method or uh, that interface sorry it's annoying i'm still trying to get used to the ide on mac guys uh, so i'm just playing around a little bit so now we have this i report formatter right that we can use inside this generator so now we can replace the json report formatter with a i report formatter like so and now at least without doing up these things or passing in the data we have been able to create a situation where this could potentially be extensible in the future all right the only thing we haven't done at the moment is basically expose this so that we can use it as part of this method now how i'm going to do that just for the purpose of this video is instead of having them as private variables here well in fact we can have them as private variables and we can set them by default to these things but what i also want to do is have the ability to pass them in here in this method themselves so i can say generate report as string and i'm going to pass in an i data provider and we'll say data provider and in fact we are going to say instead of using private methods here we'll default it to a new data provider right so if no one passes that in right we're going to say it's a new data provider if and then for the formatter we'll do the same thing again and say i formatter formatter equals new json oops we've gone a little too far so what i'll do is i'll bring the size of the stuff down in fact no i won't do that i'll actually put this on separate lines just for the purpose of the video like so Now, whatever, for some reason we're getting an error here. And it has to be a constant, so you actually can't do this. So, I'm actually going to remove this entirely. All right, whoops. So now we're going to make sure that when we use this method, we have to tell this method what data provider and what format are we going to use to get this code working, right? So that's what you're gonna see here. Yeah, I'll put that on the line as well. So for this method to now work, we have to implement a data provider and we have to implement a formatter, right? So I'm just gonna rename the variables below because they're, they're referencing the private fields, like so. And now what we've got here is a method where we can actually extend how we get the data and how we format that data, right? And this code now will never ever have to change, right? Because the two things that it's working with are extensible, right? So we have opened up the ability to have different providers that can be called in this method and we've opened up the ability to have different formatters that can be used within this method. But on top of that, we have closed this method off now that we do not need to come in here again and modify what's going on here because the flow is pretty simple. Get the data then format the data as string. That is it. That's all this method is trying to do. All right. So let's get this fully working by going back to the program. And now we know we need to pass in two more things here. So I can come back to what I previously had and I can have the standard data provider, the class that we had equals new da data provider, like so. And we can say the JSON report formatter 
equals new JSON report formatter. And we can pass these in now. So I can go dot get generate as report, pass in the provider and the JSON report formatter. Now that's the report generator class. I believe that's probably the only thing at this stage we need to change for this principle to be successful. But let's just have a quick look at what we've got here. So report generator we know is fine. That is fully extensible and does not need to change. The data provider itself, well, this is a specific provider that can be created to be used inside that generator. So if we do modify this code, we are modifying it only for how this individual data provider is meant to perform. So we don't have to make it extensible because there's nothing that this provider is using at this stage that requires extensibility. We're just storing a set of entries in memory and we're adding one entry and then we're returning it. The requirements of this data provider at this stage is basically an in-memory data provider. So the, what I might do, and the, probably the only thing I will change here, is I'll give it a better name. So I'll say in-memory data provider, right? So this just gives a better understanding to the reader exactly what this thing's meant to do. So I'll come over, I'll also rename the data provider class to be the same. So rename in-memory data provider. And while I'm here, I'll also rename the JSON formatter to JSON report formatter. And that JSON report formatter, if I look at that now, well, this doesn't need to change at all because it's doing exactly what it's meant to do and it's not utilizing anything else, okay? The only thing I might say is JSON convert is a dependency, but I would probably let that go at this point because that's just something that we're using to serialize the report entries to JSON, okay? And I think that's okay. We don't need to extend it that much. Report entry, we don't need to touch. It's just a class that has data, so that's all good. So that's pretty much all the files, right? Do we need to do anything with program? Well, the program is really our application. The only thing I need to do here is put in in memory, right? And I might rename this to in memory data provider as well. And pass that in. Right. Now let's just make sure the code's still working here. So I'll quickly give this a run. So I've got the window open here. As you can see, we get the same result as before, right? So that's good. That's what we wanted. So let's review what we did here. So basically we looked at the report generator class, right? So if I go back to the report generator class, we looked at what was inside of this class and we saw two dependencies. We saw a data provider and we saw a report formatter that was tied directly to the report generator, which meant that if we ever needed to change the formatter or the data provider, we would have had to come to this class directly and modify the code, right? So what we did instead is now we're saying we want this method called generate report as string to still use a data provider and a report formatter, but we want to be able to give the ability for the user making the call to this method to be able to specify how that data is provided and how that report, or that report is going to be formatted, right? So we extended it by adding two interfaces and then on top of that, we implemented those interfaces as part of the method, all right? So that gives us the ability now that if we ever want to create another data provider or another report formula, we can do so without ever having to touch this code, which is the exact point of the open and closed principle. We have opened for extension by using these two interfaces and we have closed for modification because now we do not ever need to touch this code ever again unless for whatever reason we change something to do with the abstraction here such as maybe a method name but other than that this file is not going to change and the le the less files that you need to change 
the, the better your application is going to stay consistent and easily testable, right? The less tests you have to modify, the more efficient you become, and so on, so on, so forth, okay? So that's it for the open and close principle. In the next video, what we're going to look at is the third principle for the solid principles, and that is known as the Liskov substitution principle. So I'll see you in the next video.